Right, so I'm here to talk about the critical value of Chinese consumers for Australian wool. It's actually quite difficult for me to talk about this because uh, as a Chinese person telling you guys how important we are, I feel like I'm trying to sell you guys something. I'm not. Over here, I'll let the data talk and um, what it actually shows and what the future looks like. So China is our largest trading partner, taking the number one position both in exports and imports. And it's critical for us to understand our number one customer. The Chinese consumer market is evolving rapidly because the income growth, demographic changes, as a result, this behavior changes what they consume and how they consume. And I'm going to look at all of these factors. What does it mean for our fiber? Now, as a, world, a global view, glo uh, globally, the, glo uh, the economy is rebalancing from over dependency on the US for demand and de uh, the, the dependence, dependency on China's export. That's changing. We can see down, down in 2009, share of GDP, global GDP, China exceeded Japan. And to forecast into 2017, China is going to exceed Eurozone. So our whole country's share of global GDP is larger than, than, than our European trading bloc. That's quite significant here. And as a rule of thumb, as a country gets wealthier, become wealthier, the consumers within that country gets wealthier and they consume different products. Let's have a look at what they consume. So GDP rise, spending changes. GDP per capita, capita USD. Down there somewhere I belong to, mobile phones, TV, basic, fast moving consumer goods, 5,000 per capita. As US, Japan, Western Europe and Australia develop economies, you guys are up there. So what concerns these people in those countries are health services and financial services. Everything else on the bottom of this graph is irrelevant. It's, it's, it's no longer a want. We can satisfy these needs quite easily. Where is China? China is roughly about there. I know we heard this morning there's a huge Gini coefficient um, of, of, of uh, um, uh, inequality. But this is just looking at China as a whole. Uh, 10,000 USD per capita, what they can consume, entry cars, housing, and brands, uh, fast moving consumer goods. We see Zara, Gap, those brands in China. And also premium goods like Louis Vuitton, Xenia, and Burberry, those brands. Where is it going? It's going upwards. And it's already moving into the premium goods and better cars and housing sector. Now, this is unbelievable. I've just set 2007 all for all of those countries back to 100 as an index. So China, personal consumption index. Personal consumption is dis disposable income, what they're buying, what the consumers spend. Unpre unprecedented growth. There's no country in the world at any time can match what China have done. Extraordinary growth alongside of decelerated population growth. I've, personally, matter of fact, I think uh, in the future, no other country can achieve that. Some, are, some of you might think, what about India? Um, it would take them a long time to achieve what China have achieved. Now, the rise of the middle income is what's important, not just to our fiber, but also to Australian produce. Over here, down here, down here we can see the bar is 10 to 30,000 um, US dollars, 30,000 to 60,000. That's the middle income earners. What this means in the next seven years is 160 million people in that category. What these consumers can consume, if you can remember to the graph before, is premium goods, fast moving consumer goods and better housing. That's what they can consume. 
So wool, cotton, some, some consumers in China will be the, fir will be the first time purchasing uh, 18, 19 micron wool knitted jumper or a suit. The first time they can actually afford to purchase, make this purchase. What is Australia's population? 22 million. It's about six times the size uh, in the next seven years. And that's excluding these consumers over there. Aging populations, not just seen um, in China, all over the world. This is quite significant as well, 20 olds, what we, well, what 20 olds see as value and quality is significantly different to a 40 year old, 60 year old. The perception changes. Negative 48 million people in the youth category, 0 to 29. Addition of 87 million in the older category in the next seven years. So China is not a youth market. So where should we target our product? Our fiber. Who are these people we're going to target? This is a bit complicated, but I'll make it easy. Don't worry, just look at down here. Middle income earners, really 30 to the 60 plus. The growth from 2013 to 2000, uh, 2020 is 147 million. These are the consumer we should target our campaigns, marketing towards. They have the money, they have the aspiration to consume. So we know who got the money and which age group they're falling, how much they have. Putting everything uh, uh, together and looking as, as a, I guess this graph is compa comparing, where does China actually stand? Yeah, you tell me all of this growth, but how does it compare to Europe and US? Consumer clothing expenditure. This is a whole country as a whole. 2009, just after the GFC, China exceeded Japan. And we're looking at 2019, it's exceeding US, the biggest clothing uh, well, expenditure country in the world, the biggest. They account for roughly 25% of world uh, apparel consumption. Some, might, some of you might question, well, this graph looks quite, quite unreal. It doesn't, uh, does it really happen in, 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 in that slope? Yes, it will, given all the changes that are happening in China. This morning, rising wages, changing distribution of income, and people moving out of the low value adding manufacturing sector to high value adding. This is all great. China's growing, we know the target market, but how do they see wool? How do they see our fiber? So research we've done uh, of uh, sustainable, how does consumers see uh, the fiber? The three key is here, 100% cotton, 100% wool, and synthetics. That's where the benchmarks are. We asked the consumers, do you think uh, these products are produced environmentally friendly and sustainable? Cotton is the benchmark. 95%, well, uh, well, yeah, close to 100% said they believe cotton is. Followed closely, it's 100% wool. 80% said, yes, it is produced environmentally friendly and it's sustainable. Then there's uh, synthetics. And this whole um, growth, growth in affluent and growth in middle class, as soon as you get richer, you care about more things. If you're hungry, you don't care about animal welfare. You're hungry, gotta eat, who cares? Now they're richer, they start to care about water, pollution, and is the product green? Is it sustainable? Oh, I'll take a note from the Chinese government, they said no more stinking GDP for China. Literally, no more polluting the country. This is quite important, where are we going to position ourselves to sell our product and how they perceive us. Next one, China compared to all other countries. Specifically on wool. 80% of the Chinese survey, uh, survey said, yes, it is positive, it is environmentally friendly. 
compared to the other countries. Overall, there's roughly about 70 to 75 percent said yes, they agree wool is environmentally friendly. So what's here is China is moving into a new course, given the political change and the income change. Demographic factors are moving China and the Chinese consumers to, uh, into a more sophisticated uh, side of things. They're no longer purchasing garments because they need to replace it. They're purchasing because they want it. They like the style or they think it's better for the environment. China will continue to drive the global expenditure uh, for clothing. And as we've seen just before the two slides, China sea wool and cotton is environmentally friendly and it is a green fiber. So regardless with China, with regards to China's new political change, new reforms, income demographic change, behavior change, it will set China for its new odyssey and it will represent a great opportunity for wool and also for Australian produce. Thank you.